All right, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. It is February 1st, 2022, 7.01 p.m. I have in attendance, Councilwoman Baradic, Councilwoman McFerrin, Councilman Zacharias, and myself, Dana Dominguez, stepping in for our mayor, Katie McCullough, who is out um, with a family emergency, as well as uh, Council Councilman uh, Omar Martinez will be out today too. All right. So, can I get a consent? All in favor, start the meeting. How about I do? Nope. Um. So you got <laughs> you've got your. You got your call. You got your roll call. Oh, so um, you did your roll call. So mm -hmm. um, we're going to call for a motion to approve the agenda oh. as amended. Yep. So yep. we so we have an amendment to the agenda. Mm -hmm. We're going to be removing item three, letters A and B, item five, and letter B. Can I get a motion? Five B was that? Yes. Yep. The trigger. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Okay. Any discussion? So, um, Mayor Pro Tem, I will, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I will, um, the closed session we are removing. So that way we have everybody present uh, so we can go over those items. And then the clerk treasurer's report, I was unable to get it fully completed, uh, just a full workload this last few weeks. So, um, but you will look to have those on your next agenda. Thank you, Lee. Mm -hmm. So then you just need a motion to approve? Mm -hmm. or, um, yes. All in favor to approve? All the, yeah. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That includes you too, right? Yep. Okay. I will let you know when I'm okay. Done. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm properly recording. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So are we going to try to do the closed session at a regular the next regular or are we going to do a special something? Do we know? Um Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious. So so the information that I got from the mayor. Um, there may have been some progress with the meeting with the city manager and the fire department and some other details that need to be hashed out. So, um, which is one of the reasons why um, the fire chief vote was taken off as well. And the fire chief knows that. And um, so with the, the mayor out and Councilman, Councilman Martinez, uh, we weren't able to have the closed session anyway because it's important that they come. Right, mm -hmm. which is basically what you all just said. <laughs> all right, next. Let's see. So, um, we were, I was just going to, since we didn't have the work session tonight, um, I was just going to quick throw uh, show a 20 minute video before we move into the public hearing. Okay. Unless it's up to council, unless you want to go right into the public hearing and then. During the discussion portion, we can talk about the tax, um, the tax levy that you have in front of you. And um, again, it was more geared toward the newly elected folks because you hadn't had that information. But I can always go over it, you know, in person with you um, if you want to. Um, that's it's uh, entirely up to you. I, I don't mind it. If the only new person here would be Dana. Yeah. So but if you want to watch it, I'm okay with it. It's up to you. I would rather, I would rather, I would wait. rather wait and maybe I can mm -hmm. review it with Julie yeah. or come into the Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Just so I know you all have seen it already. So, mm -hmm. and then maybe at that time, um, Council Member Martinez yeah. will also be able Yep. To. And we've got, we've got training stuff for it. Okay. And everything, so, okay. Sure. so then you can go ahead and move into your public hearing. Now. All right. Item number four public hearing i'd like to open it motion to open public hearing for levy all right hearing is open and so now you're going to do a roll call with each person in order to open the, the meeting sure thank you yeah all right um councilwoman Bronick. yes councilwoman mcfarren yes councilman Zacharias. Yes. and myself is yes okay open all right, any public comments or correspondence? 
the city did not receive any public correspondence um, with regards to the, the public hearing on the maximum tax dollars for certain levies. No one on Zoom currently? Nope. We received a number of phone calls regarding the coalition of excluded workers uh, supporting their, their intentions. Okay. Motion closed for the hearing. Okay. Second. All right. Hearing is closed. Okay. And then you just have to do a roll call again for the closure. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Veronica? Yes. Councilwoman McFerrin? Yes. Councilman Zacharias? Yes. And myself is yes. Okay. So then next you'll have your resolution. All right, the next item is resolution number 2022201-02, a resolution approving the tax leveling for the fiscal year 2022 to 2023 budget. Motion to approve uh, the tax levy for fiscal year 22 and 23 budget with um, a corrected a correction on on it at um, the bottom with the correct amount listed. Mm -hmm. Second. All right. Any discussion? So before you, you have. Um, so again, this was uh, passed here a few years ago. It's the first part of the budget processing where we have to set the um, the the levies that you see before you. That would be the property tax. Um, mm -hmm. That would also be the uh, tort liability, property insurance, um, emergency tax levy, um, the benefits, and um, that would include your FICA, FICA and IPERS and other employee benefits would include health insurance. And these levies that we're looking at here only apply to general fund um, employees or the general fund property tax. And so our property tax is set um, at 810. So um, then at the very bottom, right now, before we would set a debt levy, um, we are at the 14.81. Uh, and so the difference between this year and last year um, would have to do with property insurance increases. And um, our health benefits were very minimal. Um, but we've added some additional employees as well. So um, that would make up a, the small percentage of change that we have. That's the 2.53%, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And so we want to keep in mind as we're going through the budget that these numbers um, would not change. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason, if they would happen to change, then we've got to have another public hearing for that. So any questions? Do a roll call. Mm -hmm. Approve. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Ryan. Yes. Councilwoman McFerrin. Yes. Councilman yes. Zacharias. And myself is yes. Okay. Okay. Moving along here. All right. Next we'll. Next, we're going to go to the consent agenda. Is that right? Correct. Yep. Number five, which is uh, the regular council meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. um, the which uh, Clerk Gertz has submitted an updated copy to all of us. Um, we amended to take out B, the beginning, so we're not going to be talking about that. But for the clerk treasurer report. And then the request to approve the liquor license, Class C, with Sunday sales for Flama's Night Club. Second. Any discussion? Chief, has there been any issues with Obama's nightclub? Um, usually they're pretty good about requesting um, either one of the officers or a reserve, and that usually keeps things as calm as it probably can be. Okay. Great. Council Member McFerry, did you want to make mention of the items that we did change? Go uh, ahead. I, I had just noticed a few items that um, I needed changed in the minutes that um, needed to be corrected under the meetings to be recorded down at the bottom paragraph. Uh, the, the old minutes uh, stated assistant chief Sickles, so we just had to change that mm -hmm. to assistant chief um, Christensen. 
Um, and then I believe there was just a typo for um, under B, public comments and correspondence under old business, under B, old business, um, where it says approved to table, though with plus somebody volunteer, I believe we changed that, mm -hmm. correct? I added well, with discussion. Okay, yeah. just to clarify that. Yeah. Um, and I think those those two were it, yeah. I think, right? Yep. Yeah. So uh, I just picked up on a few of those. You could be good. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Uh, can I, all those in favor? All in favor. Opposed? Okay, passes, four zero. Next is the vendor voucher claims. We have the vendor voucher claim list number one in the amount of two, $241,334.51. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Or, uh, sorry, discussion? Yeah, I did have a couple of questions mm -hmm. on those. Um, if you look at line item nine on ReadyMix, um, I questioned that because it says finance charges, and I was just a little concerned if that was finance charges because we hadn't paid something or where that come from. So um, I believe that was corrected. Leah, yeah. can you uh, elaborate on that? Uh, yes, uh, Councilmember McFerrin, um, when you brought that to my attention, I did reach out to Han Ready Mix and they did communicate that that would be a, a, a refunded charge. Um, we've left it on here to approve with the claims and then they're doing a reimbursement for those expenses. Okay. Um, so so we, they'll, they'll just send us? Yeah, okay. they'll credit us that amount. Um, what had happened, just a real quick, what had happened was um, there was a, a not an update for the email communication. And then when they tried to mail things, we had had a change with our PO box to our street address. And so we had a couple of invoices. And so um, with a little further discussion um, with the, the owner, um, they completely understood. And yeah, uh, because we in just the last month have um, with one of our projects, we spent, you know, close to $20,000. And so uh, they understood that there had been some between our two administration and then correcting some emails and correcting the, the mailing address. So, so thank you for bringing that. In. Yep. And and I think 29, I was questioning, mm -hmm. but as I was reading down the notes, it mm -hmm. looks like that Polydyne Incorporated was, the polymer was in regards to the screw press, yep. I believe. Yeah, it's within maintenance within the wastewater treatment plant. Okay, because I wasn't sure. And then on number 35, the is it channel wires or is that what it is? Um, all I know is that it, it's a it's like chemicals. Um, it, USA okay. Blue Book provides a chemical that um, we use. Um, those chemicals are used with the lift stations and with the wastewater treatment plant. Okay. Okay. I I just didn't know if that was a typo or if that was actually that's what it's called. <laughs> that, well, that was what I think the description on the invoice they had. Okay, that's all I had. Let me find my spot there. <clears throat> do we do each list? Or? Or, it's a, or, or, yeah, you do yeah. each yeah. list. You just need a you just need a consent, consent for item A. Okay. Yep. All right. All of all um, in favor of item A, say aye. 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 All opposed. It passes. <clears throat> Four zero. Uh, item B, vendor voucher claims list number two in the amount of $392.60. Motion to approve. Sure. Thank you. Any discussion? So again, just a reminder, we do separate these claims out um, for Council Member McFerrin um, mm -hmm. as her business. So um, that would be the reason why those are separated out from your other claims. And she did, and their business did a very nice job. Um, 
just to let you know, the, the new metal sign is up. Um, so that replaced the old city hall. Refurbished. Refurbished. I'm sorry. Refurbished. <laughs> yeah. um, it looks great. Yes. Oh, good. And Although I did notice that prior, the old way it was hung was mm -hmm. jutting out the corner of the building. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming whoever put it up maybe bent the metal frame rods so that it goes at a 90 degree angle to the building i know the day they were putting it up it was a it was one of those beautiful windy days that we had here uh, <laughs> so i yeah we can some trouble getting yeah it. yeah because yeah, it does hang differently than what it used to but it's it yeah. still meets it the looks name. very nice it's very <laughs> visible and um and the and the the signage on the front of the building too is very attractive so it looks Great. good Okay, so, <laughs> all right. Uh, all in favor to approve item B? Aye. Aye. I abstain. All opposed? So, three uh -huh. with uh, Councilwoman Karen abstaining. Yep, got it. All right, the next section we have public comments. Um, this is for the time set aside for comments from the public on top, topics of city business, other than those listed on the agenda. No action may be taken. Do we have to do a motion to do this too? No, no, no. Okay. This is just you call forward. Um, so I had Mr. Grassi. I was notified that he was on public comments. I didn't know if he was present or not. I don't believe uh, Mr. Grassi is here. I don't see him. So. Um, if there are folks in the hall, is did he send correspondence? Do we know what is going on? I don't know what it was. I uh, actually was not at the fire station and he indicated that I think we sent a future meeting since, since uh, we had two members captain. So. Yeah. Hmm. Emily, are there folks out there that want to speak? Is that Emily? No. Can't tell with the mask. No? Yeah, that's Emily. Yeah. Are there people who want to speak during public comments or are they waiting for the the other? Yeah, questions? we're waiting for the other. Okay, great. Do you have an agenda? All right. So we're currently at public comments. Is there anybody on, on Zoom that would like to make a comment during the public comment section? Just use your um, raise hand feature or go ahead and speak. We do have the chat open. Or you can use the chat, yes. Okay. Do we have anybody? Nope. All right. Um, any public? Um, correspondence? Yes, I did receive one mm -hmm. from uh, Beth Brophy. Mm -hmm. She's a, a community member here in West Liberty. And Sorry, I can't help with that. <laughs> Siri's trying is to it, help with our technical, <laughs> technical <laughs> difficulties. Okay. <laughs> um, she is encouraging the city council to use the relief funds, American Rescue Relief Funds, to improve our ambulance services here rather than um, provide it to, as she quote unquote, to non citizens. Um, this is relief for West Liberty, not private citizens. That's her quote. Uh, so I just wanted to relay that, that I did receive communications from her. I also received that same one as I. Any other communication? Do you all have stuff that you want to talk about? Just a couple things. I uh, just wanted to remind uh, everybody here tonight that uh, on February 11th from 12 to 2, we've got the West Liberty Business Association Luncheon at the Community Center, uh, hosted by West Liberty Foods and, and We Lead. Also, um, we received notice that the Chamber of Commerce has their awards bank coming up. It's on February 22nd. And they've got social at five and dinner at six. And then the other little piece of information that I needed to uh, get to you, uh, Chief has been keeping me up to date. He has been uh, looking for a residency 
uh, based on his contract, closer here to the city. I've been looking since July. I know he's looked at a number of homes and put offers on. He doesn't have anything. And his six months, according to his contract, is up. So um, I would encourage you to um, allow him a little more time. Extend I, I, that. To extend that, I, I know right now there's just not a lot out of the market. But come March, April, there should be. And I think in talking with Chief, his, his realtor had, had indicated as well that come March and April, there'll be a lot more properties out of the market for purchase. So. Okay. But he has been diligently looking uh, for a place close. And, uh, and we probably talked weekly, you know, about how the search is going. And it was, and it was kind of like my search. It was very difficult for us. So for that, does there need to be a solution? probably what probably what we would do is bring something back to your next meeting. And I, okay. I think I just kind of wanted the consensus signature, and I figured you'd all be okay. But we did need to note it tonight, mm -hmm. and we'll prepare something for the meeting on the fifteenth that would allow Chief some additional time, mm -hmm. you know, to formally amend this contract. Yes, very so good. I won't see any problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the only thing I have is. Uh, uh, Nick Heath, director of Parks and Rec. Um, there is a community meeting coming up on, uh, let's see, February 16. Um, what was the time? Six to eight, Six to 8 p.m. Uh, this is where they'll be uh, having community input on, uh, they're working on the Master Parks Plan with Vice State. And um, where's that at, Lee? At the West Liberty Community Center. Okay. And the only other things I had, um, and I will work with uh, our communications director, we have, so this week, the uh, new hours have gone into effect. And so City Hall is open till 5 p.m. And um, and then staff after 5 p.m. is still, if they're working on processing, we're lining up some uh, work and additional duties and probably set some training for them as well after those hours. So we'll keep you posted on how these things are going. So. Oh, and Madam Member, can I do another thing? Uh, Councilman Farron has stopped in earlier today as well and uh, questions about the snow uh, emergency ordinance. Oh, yeah. And I did speak with Adam. Um, that ordinance, I mean, over the period of that time, there was about a 12 hour time period that that snow was flying. And the ordinance is called in place basically so they're able to pop curb to curb on those snow routes. With the exception in the downtown, and, and Adam said, you know, they're not going to shut any businesses down during the day period. They were kind of cleaning what they could with, with skid loaders and continue to do that. But after the business, they're all closed. And they, so like have, he said, usually the theater is about the last one to close. And, and when they close, they basically come in and, you know, finish cleaning the downtown. So uh, people don't have to worry about, you know, parking down there during the day during the snow. They'll kind of work around it. But on the other snow routes, uh, yeah, they don't really park on those because they're going to be fine. Like on the, the side streets. Side streets that are that are designated as part of that emergency scenario, yes. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. So the businesses don't have anything to worry about. Okay. Thank you. As it starts to be like in Kansas. All right. Any other comments? In the public? Comments to correspondence section. Okay. All right, then we can move on then to old business. Item A is discussion and appropriate follow up of mayoral committee appointments for city council appointments for the ambulance and public safety committee. I spoke to the mayor earlier today and she recommended, if needed, that we could table this item to discuss later when she's here. But it's up to y'all. It'll be up to one of you to call the motion as to how you want to handle the um, everything that's in front of you is what um, the mayor and I, I believe she included all of council when she followed up with the with the committees at this time. I'll make the motion to table it. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. So we'll take it from the, and have it listed on the next meeting. Okay. All right. Item B Discussion of the American Rescue Plan funds requested by Escucha Mi Um Please feel free to come in if you, if you like. 
um, we're, we're going to take this time right now to discuss the American Rescue Funds um, requested by Escucha Mules. And um, for me, I would like to uh, we just look at the question. No, we don't, right? Okay. So, um, because it seems to be kind of dragging on and we did get the final report that was uh, finalized by the federal government of how to use those funds. Uh, I think during this discussion, I'd like to hear uh, a plan to maybe either collaborate with some folks to see, um, to kind of start making a plan to see if this is even possible or not. Um, that's me speaking as a council member and I would be happy to do that as well. Yeah, yeah. Is that, sure. I, I think at this point, you know, we're, we're still gathering data. And mm -hmm. that, that final uh, report was about 436 days. Yeah. Um, but I have been in contact with, with Muscatine County. And I have been in contact with the city manager in Iowa City. He's going to be calling me to check you some information on the things that uh, they're doing. Um, what we were going to recommend as staff tonight is that this be um, sent to the finance committee for discussion. And, you know, we can, you know, as we continue to gather that data, you know, we'll you know, then hear the folks here this evening. All, all of that can be taken into consideration as the finance committee meets and then brings a recommendation back to council. That's my motion is that it should go to the finance committee. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Wait. And discussion? Before the, sure. the vote, yes. Uh, it was my understanding that um, during this week, the finance committee was going to meet and, and have a proposition. No. Okay. No, we have, I mean, what we had talked about from staff was to get the committee together uh, to have, you know, the, the start of the discussion this evening with council and kind of bringing up the things that we're working on to gather additional data for council and for the finance committee. But we need to schedule with them to have that discussion. I would also like to emphasize the fact that many other municipalities and big cities have approved uh, this type of uh, relief effort. Uh, we are not uh, unique in this uh, fashion. Uh, from the very beginning, I, I show my uh, intentions to help this effort. At the same time, I I'm very conscious that I was. I am here not because of the Latino vote. I am here representing the entire city. So, in my opinion, we need to uh, discuss the situation, see if we can afford to provide some relief, and uh, keeping in mind that we need the city have some other needs that we need to take care. Of. Absolutely, and I know that uh, you know there was. A lot of information that was um, forwarded on to me from the city manager over in Iowa City, and I think it was information that came out of Johnson County, and uh, kind of talked about some of the things with the larger communities. And that's part of my reason for having a follow up call with him. Is, um, depending, and I I hear what you're saying, but then some of the things that I'm reading that some of the bigger cities are doing don't just specify that it's going to uh, the folks that had been excluded throughout it's you know so some of those i believe and that's part of the verification process is that those dollars were being um, set aside for everyone in their community that could tap into those dollars so and i'm just trying to verify all that so you will have the best information possible to make your decisions and i think we have a unique community to where as if we did open up for folks who were excluded during this time it would automatically serve a lot of people in our community a lot of our essential and excluded workers who did not get those funds so i mean that's that's a, a good point that you bring to keep an open mind that if we do need to open it up to but we need to figure out the process, you know, and if we can afford to do that and how we can do the verification. And I know there's other cities too that have kind of laid it out for other cities as well. So, yeah, because I, unless I'm not asking for solutions or discussion right now in detail, but I really would, one of my most, um, basic questions would be in the event we had a reserve some of that fund 
to give to uh, that demographic, how would how would it would be dispersed? Because at this point, I don't understand how we could possibly vet each individual candidate um, because that process involves a ginormous amount of, of paperwork and well, basically vetting each individual that's going to receive money. And I don't think the city has it enabled in, in our power to do that. I think we have that possibly enabled in our power to give to an organization, but to an individual, I, I really have my concerns um, that the city would be able to cut checks to individuals, you know, that possibly we could we could give to organizations, but to individuals, I don't, I don't think we have that, that ability until we can vet, you know, those individuals and know that it's going towards. I understand those concerns, and that's a very valid point, the logistics of that. At the same time, I would like to emphasize that if we decided to provide that relief, it's going to go to a lot of American citizens that are here right now. Maybe the parents are not, but these kids are American citizens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, then it have to open up to all the citizens in the community. Well, that's the point to decide. I understand. All the residents. Mm -hmm. Is there discussion before I open it? Is there anybody from the community that would like to speak? No. You could state your name and your address, please. Yeah. Um, My name is Ruth Palma. My name is Ruth Palma. Vivo aquí en West Liberty desde hace 14 años. I've lived in West Liberty for 14 years. And soy líder del movimiento Escucha Mi Voz en West Liberty. I'm one of the leaders of Escucha Mi Voz in West Liberty. Vengo en representación de todos los trabajadores excluidos. I'm here representing all the excluded workers. En esos meses atrás, todos hemos escuchado testimonios de estos trabajadores. These months that have passed, we've heard the stories, the testimonies of these workers. Historias que han sido vividas aquí en West Liberty. Testimonies that people have lived here in West Liberty. Todo ser humano, alguna parte en su vida, ha sido asistido de una u otra forma. We've all been human. Uh, we all are human, and at one point in our lives, had to give and take. Hemos sido asistidos en nuestra infancia por nuestros padres. Con nuestros maestros. When we were young, when we were babies, we had to depend on our parents or our teachers. Así como de adultos, algunas personas necesitan asistencia de su gobierno. And as adults, we need help from our government. Sin embargo, nosotros somos esos trabajadores excluidos. But we are the excluded workers. A pesar de pagar miles en impuestos cada año. Besides paying millions of dollars in taxes each year, somos contribuyentes y hemos estado en primera línea durante la pandemia. We contribute and we've been on the front lines during the pandemic. Esta noche quiero enviar un mensaje a los que no están de acuerdo que se nos entregue este fondo. Tonight I want to send a message to those who are not in agreement to give us this money. Nosotros somos las personas que limpiamos las escuelas. Donde posiblemente sus hijos estudian. We are the people that clean the schools that your children, if you have them, go to. Lo que cocinamos en los carnavales aquí en el pueblo. We do the cooking in this town. Y también para los programas de inclusión social. Los que trabajamos bajo el sol reparando las calles donde posiblemente ustedes transitan. Working in the roofing under the sun. Es pensar de una forma egoísta. Don't be selfish. Don't have selfish thinking. Que una cifra de 1,400 dólares para un trabajador excluido es mucho. Thinking that $1,400 is too much. No es ni siquiera la mitad de lo que la demás población ha recibido. It's not even half of what everyone else received. Buenas noches. Thank you.
Ah, buenas noches. Eh, mi nombre es Edgar. Yo vivo aquí en West Liberty hace 14 años. Good evening. My name is Edgar. I lived in West Liberty for 14 years. Eh, nosotros eh, sabíamos que hoy iban, iban a hacer la votación. Today we were thinking you would take the vote. Y sabemos que hoy no hay algunos concejales aquí presentes. But we know there are some council folks that aren't here today with us. Pero a los que están presentes solamente queremos decirles. But for those who are today, here today. Que actúen humanamente. That act um, with humility. Y que necesitamos de esa ayuda. We need this help. De porque es la única oportunidad que nosotros tenemos para obtener una ayuda económica. It's the only opportunity that we have to get some kind of economic help. Si no nos dan, si no nos apoyan, seremos olvidados como siempre. If you don't support us, we will be forgotten like always. Eso es todo. That is it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kevin. Hi, my name is Kevin Velasquez Diaz. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to listen to us. I am supporting the group. I come from immigrant parents and hard workers who never give up. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Lashen Diaz. My immigrant parents have never stopped working regardless of the pandemic or ills. Always fighting to bring bread to our table. Thank God we have never been lacking. They are an example of workers who deserve the help that is being asked of you. My name is Edwin Oscar Zeus. All these people are important people in this country. Hard workers always working for the community and state. Si se puede. This year has not been great for me or my mom. First, my mom got COVID, and it was not good. I'm sorry. I feel really bad for my mom for what she has to go through. I had COVID too, and I did it. Like it, it was a really horrible experience. I have a mom that does not have papers, and I think she should get help because she she doesn't get help from anybody, and she does everything everything she can by herself without anybody helping her. That is the thank you. Um, lo voy a leer por mi hija, sí, porque no, no quiere. Hola, buenas noches. Hi, good evening. Mi nombre es Bela Andrés. My name is Bela Andrea. Gracias por estar aquí hoy. Thank you for being here today. Quiero dar mi versión. Tengo padres inmigrantes. I'd like to give my story. I have um, parents who are immigrants. Y son muy trabajadores. And they are very hard workers. Ellos trabajan muy duro. They work really hard. Para que no nos falten nada. So we don't lack anything. Pero por la pandemia. But because of the pandemic. No han podido trabajar. They haven't been able to work. Mi mami tuvo COVID. My mom had COVID. Y perdió su trabajo. And lost her job. Y estoy aquí. And I'm here. Para que su voz sea escuchada. So that you can hear her voice. No solo la de ella. Not just her voice. Sino la de todos. But all of them. Esta gente que está aquí presente. These people that are here present. present. Gracias. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody. I spoke to the mayor earlier today, and like she said last time, she wants us to make a decision within this month. So we're going to be working with the city manager to see what we can find out and try to get it on the uh, agenda to vote it for the next council meeting if Vamos we have a enough information. Con la ciudad entre nosotros para tratar de trabajar en eso y tal vez la dice try to get it on for the next one. In two weeks, yeah. And tal vez pone en la agenda and try to vote para votar en dos semanas. Well, that's going to be based on a finance committee meeting mm -hmm. and more information is being gathered. And um, myself, I, I can only speak for myself. I am on the finance committee, so I will try to put in the extra hours I can to make sure that we know as much information as we can to try to to try to make that deadline. But if not, I will I will talk with um, David or uh, Father Guillermo to let you all know this, to make sure that you understand the process and where we are. Yo estoy en este comité y yo voy a trabajar, solo puedo hablar por mí mismo, dice, voy a tratar de trabajar más que puedo para que podamos um, tomar las decisiones, pero voy a comunicar con el Padre si cambia algo. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I would just point out too that uh, we have a meeting, or we, we will have a regular meeting again on March 1st. So mm -hmm. we've got you know, the 15th coming up and then the 1st of March. Oh, okay. What's that? The meeting first? We actually have, I mean, if it's there, there's a meeting, our, our next regular meeting is scheduled for the 15th okay. of February, and then our next one will be March 1st. Okay. So that will be within that 30 day period. 15 and the 1st of February. Sure. Sí. Solo dejarles saber que escucha mi voz es la organización que nosotros estamos, mm -hmm. so que es confiable para el depósito del dinero, y que por favor, si Dios lo permite y sus corazones lo, lo prueban, eh, puede enviarlo a ellas. Maria is saying that we are a group, we're organized, our group is Escucha Mi Voz, and um, if this works out and God wants, um, this could be an organization that could work with you to give out the money. Also, uh, also, just a reminder, like they said, uh, to, to be reminded that to take us into account, you're an important part of this community. And we thank you, um, and we thank God first, and hope that he will touch your hearts. And we are asking for half of the money that you will receive. Ellos también, como hijos de nosotros, que están apoyando. We hope you support us and um, like the kids said. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Do they have a, a working relationship with like Lula or Estados Unidos or any, any other organizations? Um, or other organizations? organizaciones? So she wanted to make a point to your comment that you heard in Jackson County that they're opening up the program to other people. Uh, I have not heard that. I, I said I have a call in to... Uh, Talk to the Iowa City Manager, who was going to kind of give me more information on how the program is working. But they're, I guess, kind of partnering with Johnson County. I, I don't have all the details, right. yet, but we're going to, but we've got 
Did we even pay a phone tag? She just wanted to remind you that that wouldn't be possible if you're in less liberty because of the amount of money that you're getting. Um, it would only be enough for the excluded workers. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Madam Mayor, we have a, a motion by uh, Council Member Veronic to move it to the Finance Committee. Um, do I have a second? A second. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just need a consent. All in favor? Yeah. All in favor? Please. 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 Okay, what's the right? Okay, All right, I lost my place here. So you are on new business. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, discuss the new business appropriate follow up to enter the agreement with Bowman and Miller CPA, contractor in annual city audits no go ahead motion to enter into agreement Bowman and miller for the next five years second okay all right any discussion so madam mayor um we're required to send a request for proposal um for uh, two or more and we received the only proposal we received was from bowman and miller um, through some discussions with CPAs, it's come to my attention that the auditor of state are also sending uh, correspondence out that they are having to turn down uh, doing annual audits for communities uh, because they're limited on staffing. And um, likewise, that's putting additional uh, requests out to CPAs as well. And um, so again, it was my my recommendation, staff's recommendation to look at a longer term contract with uh, Bowman and Miller uh, as um, it's been good to be working uh, on a timely manner, working through some, you know, audit cleanup. And I know um, the finance committee set in on those comments. And so, uh, so again, it's just our recommendation that we would take a look at that five year commitment and continue to work with Bowman and Miller. Okay. And in the original packet, I think that you had a couple options. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what those are? So the couple options are, um, always it's, it's a discussion of, we recommend that you would approve um, you can do nothing and we can send out another RFP. Um, the impact on the budget is going to be no different than how it is existing because it's a breakdown between uh, funds in order to pay. Um, as you can see, Bowman and Miller are um, for a cash basis. Um, the thing that drives up the cost is when we um, they have to do an additional uh, discoveries on certain things, or if there's additional questions that they may have to do in order to, you know, do things. So if we do nothing, then we could have the potential of not having a CPA at all. Um, and so again, that's where I go back to our recommendation for the five years. They've served us well to this point, and they're very good about uh, returning our results in, like you said, a timely manner. So I'm very happy with their service, actually. And we can get an audit in six months versus over two years. Um, that makes a huge difference. And if that, if the state is not now going to reduce their amount of cases that they're going to take, we're kind of ahead of the game for most cities then. So we don't have to jump the gun looking for a, an auditor. Um, is it is it have to be a five year contract? Could we do like a two year contract, or is it negotiable at all? I'm um, just, and I'll, let me tell you why. I, I and I, you know, I'm newer to this, and and I know like Kara and you would have worked with them last year too. So I'm I I love um, the meeting that we had the other day, and I saw that the city in itself has made a lot of progress just in the last couple of years. 
And I think that might be because of this firm, which is great. It's just uh, when I look at all of the different amounts, it's a lot of money to promise for the next five years. And maybe I'm misunderstanding, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the kind of logistical things of how state audits work versus having a, a private firm do it. Is there a difference? Do we get charged for a state audit? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's not much different, different. from okay. what no. they're doing, quite honestly. And okay. they're not timely. I know, and right? The state is not timely. <laughs> okay. And, and yeah. they have not been as thorough as right. we've had. And I think we, we're lucky if we can lock them in for five years. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And the price that they're at is, isn't bad. Mm -hmm. right? Because for some other firms, it could be twice that much. Mm -hmm. We've got, I know in the past when we've got RFPs long ago, They've been up to like forty five thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars. So this is this is great. We actually reduced our costs because prior to this, um, yes, uh, even with the state auditors, we were running in the upwards of thirty some thousand, and we were not getting them done on a timely basis. Prior to that, we had ran into a couple of audits that uh, were done by another CPA firm that ran into the $40,000 range. And so, they were not as thorough. Mm -mm. No. And um, the other, so we're required um, to have an annual audit because we're over a $2 million um, with our budget. And so we're required to have that. And again, just as we had, we had originally talked about, we it's concerning because RFPs, if I'm only getting one RFP back, and this was the same thing I had last year when I ran RFPs, I only received one. And so I just, that would be my biggest concern is that uh, we'll run out of time and then we're at jeopardy of not getting an audit done on a timely basis, which then is going to impact the city in a negative in, in a negative way. They can withhold our tax dollars. Uh, the state can withhold tax dollars once for not having those fun things done on a timely manner. So um, again, I would say if you go forward with that, um, I, I believe we can always reach out to Bowman and Miller and ask that if we're not happy with the way things are going, um, what's the possibility of ending it sooner than later? Yeah, I think that was a They're little pretty vague flexible. In the agreement. Yeah, but, but pretty flexible about, yeah. Okay. But it did say that the city could terminate at any time. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, as, as long as we, of course, pay them for the services that they Correct. provided. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up. Yep. Any other discussion about that? Otherwise? Yep. We have a motion. Second. Motion second. Mm -hmm. You need a vote. Is it a consent vote? Mm -hmm. All in yep. favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. Passes for zero. And we'll have, um, we'll go ahead and have city manager sign the agreement and we'll get that submitted over to Bowman and Miller. Sounds great. All right, let's move on to new business. Oh no, to the next new business. Yeah. All right, I'm in a time machine here. <laughs> All right, so um, we've got some new grants to look over. And we have Ken here. If you see Actually, anything. I'm going to speak to the first one. Oh, sure, go right uh, ahead. Ken had offered his services, but uh, Mr. Keel uh, prepared this himself, and, oh, sure. and I asked for some additional information when he sent it over. But uh, what Mr. Keel is asking for is he's looking to do some accessibility improvements um, to his in his building downtown. He's got a number of apartments upstairs, and from the photos in the or on the back of the building, you can see that the uh, he's got an old set of stairways there that he's wanting to, to replace. Uh, he has received two bids, but uh, he's asking. Uh, for $8,400, and the rest would be um, paid by Mr. Keel. Um, he did have a, a grant that was approved, I believe, this current year. Is this or so past year? This fall. This or past fall. Past, past fall. But according to um, our Economic Development Grant Program, um, you can receive up to seven, up to twenty-five thousand mm -hmm. per property. So this eighty-four hundred dollars would still keep him under that twenty-five thousand dollars threshold. So, sure. so we would recommend uh, that you approve that. I'll make a motion to approve. So, would give him an advance. My concern with the grant program is as follows. Uh, 
if we are granting money to uh, persons uh, who, who had uh, apartments, I would like in the future to make sure that those apartments have the minimum uh, amenities or quality of habitation for, for the people to rent. Mm -hmm. And in the future, again, uh, we will probably, I would like to have a, a housing inspector part time to do this work because I believe some apartments in downtown, not exactly the best. Uh, yeah, so I had a question on that. Do you want to say something? Um, in the application, it does list, it does say, is the property up to city code in compliance with existing zoning, land use, and our building code requirements? So I assume he did check yes. I assume that that is and verified. And he signed. Uh, or we do it, is it up to code? With so we we do have our rental inspections, and I do not have anything from our landlord or from our building inspector stating that he's not up to code. That there's a violation of code. Who's the business inspector? Uh, Terry Gert is our Terry building Gert. inspector. Because I know that some of the windows in that property are plastic, like some kind. Of um, I, I, I put some new windows, I think, on the back side of that building. This, yes, as far as you know, keep it in mind for uh, just to improve the quality of yeah. uh, life, you know, because I it was part of years and years ago of some experiences that I don't know. Well, and I and I would just note that even you know, if we you know, as we're redoing our code, that if we want to. I mean, I mean, in some cities I've worked for, like rental inspections had to happen every couple of years. And then there was some debate on whether you could do it every couple of years. So it was based upon if the tenant requested that there be an inspection because there was a problem, they, they could come in. But a lot of our folks did, um, if they had long-term tenants, uh, people were there for multiple years and, and never made complaints. And in one city, they allowed that to go longer than the two years or when it changed. Mm -hmm. you know, if somebody moved in and out, then it had to be inspected. So I think as we work through our code, if there's if there's issues, you know, we can talk to Terry, we can talk to the council. But if we want to, you know, put some more teeth into our into our rental inspection program, you know, the time to do it would be as we're uh, updating our code. Yeah, because really we need to update that. We, we really haven't done much with that because we've been preoccupied with so many other things. But um, uh, we're just going off of, as far as this application goes, we're just going off of the integrity of the applicant. So, Mr. So, any again, um, we have, so there is a program that we do for our rental inspections. Okay. And so we have kind of similar to your quadrants with your site okay. comps. So there's a listing and a timeline that Terry will go out. And just as the city manager stated, tenants, um, if they have a concern or they have an issue with their property, then they can contact us at City Hall and then they file a request to have an inspection. Mm -hmm. And then we can expedite to have the building inspector inspect the, the apartment um, if it's outside of the of the plan time, I know that Terry has gone on to the property a few times for uh, recent permit filings. So um, at the same time from administration's due diligence, um, if upon approval, again, we can go back and have that discussion with uh, with our building inspector to make sure that we have um no issues and then and see where we're at with those planned inspections but based on what i have now i don't have anything in front of me saying that there's a violation that exists and does so. that cost the tenant anything to have it inspected if they have a complaint okay no that would be i mean any costs or any violations um again those would be beyond the property owner okay. they typically would give them a a, a a certain amount of time to correct them Mm -hmm. And then if they're not, then there's different steps that are involved in that. And then uh, let me just reiterate, once the um, property owner has gone through that ceiling of 25000 that's it. For, no that, more, for that property. For that property. Yeah, I mean, right. if they own multiple properties, they can right, apply right. in multiple places. But 
But for that address, that property would be the max. Okay. And he used that other money to update windows? The no, roof. He for the roof. Oh, the roof. The roof. Okay. He, I saw, you know, we saw that he did some work on some windows uh, this past fall. Okay. On the back side of the building. So. Okay. Yeah. I know there was a motion. Do we need a yep. just have a motion? I think we need Diane. a second. Mm -hmm. second. 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 Jose. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Pass the four zero. All right. On to the next one. Are you is this you, Ken? This is me. Okay, great. Good evening. Is it all right if I present from here? Yes. So uh last time I was before you, I I stood in the middle to present as I would prefer to do. And then I made the mistake of watching the Zoom call, the recording. And that was a very unfortunate angle. <laughs> so I will not be standing there anymore. <laughs> I mean, you could stand at the podium or you could sit at I, I guess whatever you're supposed to be. I'll, I'll just say. Wherever the comfortable is fine. Yeah. Well, we lead is here this evening on behalf of Rachel Morrison and uh, West Cell Salon and Boutique. Uh, you're here for the grant requesting the full $25,000, um, the match is actually exceeding that. She's looking to spend $58,400 to completely uh, improve the, the front of her, her shop there. So um, kind of in summary here, she's looking for uh, new windows there in the storefront and in the second floor. Uh, she would like to construct a handicap entrance with a railing, mm -hmm. level the floor, foundation, uh, fix the, the exterior brick and add signage. And uh, she did a wonderful job in providing some pictures there of what that project is going to look like. Uh, I, I wish we had access to more stuff like that with all of our projects because that makes it really easy to visualize and, yeah. and see what a dramatic improvement that will be the part of our downtown that can really use the picture. Well, on Herbie House, we did a wonderful job renovating that entire body mm -hmm. My question is the steps and the handicap. How much of the sidewalk is that going to take up? Was it going to be similar to um, the market? Yes, yeah, the, the market. market. I almost said the market. That's how old I am. The market. Is it going to be similar to that? I, I think so. So I, I've only seen the plans. I, I've okay. seen what, what you've seen here. So Council Member Baranek, I think yeah. at that time with the building inspector, we would have to do we would have to go and have him and inspect and see, um, because I know we have run into where we had asked for a variance because wanting to make it updated for ADA compliance, um, then we would then direct her to a variance uh, if needed, uh, if we need to take up more of the, of the public sidewalk for that purpose. And because um, I know we, I think uh, if I remember correct, the, the pharmacy, I, I wasn't a part of that when that one was placed, uh, but I know we did something similar with another building um, next to we lead um, the salon. I think we had oh, to do a step. This that we for did. their apartments upstairs, correct. I believe. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For instance, we, have reviewed, uh, we were able to do it without a variance, but at the same time, we'll probably have to have Terry review those, per, you know, those plans. So all of it would be contingent on meeting the building inspection, but um, I don't see an issue with, you know. And I did want to make note alongside that thought too is, uh, what what she's planning on doing for that residential access doorway because that's not in her in her updated plans mm -hmm. of how she's going to address that doorway going up to her rentals if that's going to be in with her railing or if that's going to be a different route or how okay. that's all yeah. I for one am very excited for the nail portion of it. I think it's a huge need for our community. Um, so I'm excited that she's willing to take that on. Is there is there? no more discussion or make the motion to approve. Yeah, I second. All those opposed? Aye. Passes 3-1. 
Or you're in favor? Yes. Or you're opposed? Oh, I'm, I'm in favor. <laughs> okay. I thought she okay. was asking. For okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, so, again. so all those in favor? Uh, all, right. all right. All those opposed? Okay. Okay. Passes four zero. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Let me get back to my agenda here. Do we have, oh, we have to set a work session, oh, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So we're on item D under section nine, set the date for the city council work session on February 15th at 6 p.m. for eighth grade. It's on. Is that work for everybody? Six. 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 Okay, all those in favor? Okay. Uh, do you want do you want some more time, Kara? No, that's, I was looking okay. at my calendar. Uh, that's six, six, six. Yeah, I think we're getting some heat. <laughs> all those in favor? Sorry. Aye. 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 All those opposed. All right, we'll go get go ahead and set that up. Okay, and so we will have um, with Bowman and Miller, they'll provide um, our budget information or our audit oh, geez, been working on budget <laughs> audit information at that time and they'll go through um similar to what we have with the finance committee um and then now they'll go to as a final report to to council as a whole okay. and then after we meet with that that's when it gets sent so then we would put it on to file and receive so then it can okay. go to yep all right sounds good all right, the next item, set the dates to establish the work session for the budget presentation with the mayor and city council and city departments. This one is a little bit more tricky because I bet there's a lot of schedules to. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, typically by now we've already had a couple of work sessions on them, but we've had a lot of things on our um, going on. And so, so the city manager and I took a look here and we would like to propose uh, February 22nd. Uh, we would keep it separate from a council meeting. Uh, again, it, we've tried to run it with a council meeting in the past and it makes for a very long night and um, it's difficult to, you know, by 10 o'clock at night, <laughs> you've heard all these numbers and things. So, and I, and I think we've talked about for this first one is just basically trying to deal with the general, general fund. fund. And then yeah. we'll set another meeting to discuss like the enterprise. Okay. Yeah. And what day of the week is that? The Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Oh, okay. What time? Um, we did not make a recommendation for a time because, again, we're learning everybody, you know, we've got some new schedules here. So, we did not. Um, I mean, it, it would be it would be good if we could do five, but again, I want to be um, I want to recognize that there are some that commute or. Mm -hmm. I I I was going to make the, the suggestion for a five, and then mm -hmm. perhaps you know bring like a sack lunch or something. And eat we, there. We're going to plan on bringing some sort of uh, oh food in for council and mayor to. Feed you while you have to listen to us talk about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Because I know it, it's going to be a bit lengthy. So, yeah, I, I would, if by a the better. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if anybody was familiar with Council Member um, Martinez. I didn't know what his, if, if he was, I, I didn't know if he was commuting. I just wanted to be, you know, respectful of his time. And, and um, even if we set it for five and it becomes in a little, we can go ahead and set it for five. And if we find out differently, then we'll we'll make sure that we let everybody know. So, okay. so February 22nd at 5 p.m. a work session. And where are we doing it at? Here. Here this room. Unless I find a, maybe we'll talk to we leave. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'll announce your meeting, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what we'll want is if we want a motion and a second. A motion for February twenty second. Start the general fund budget process at five p.m. Mm -hmm. at the library or wherever it works to out. Be to, to, yeah. to be announced. Yeah. To be Second. Yeah. Okay. 
Right. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. That's very good. Thank you. All righty. Almost to the finish line. Um, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I just wanted to, um, we'll get into uh, with City Engineer Leo fully here, but um, because we had an issue uh, with the meeting, um, there are some folks that have been making some comments with regards to sure. wanting to have public comments. Sure. So I was thinking um, after we have uh, City Engineer Leo fully speak, mm -hmm. um, if it would be permitted to have ask again on Zoom for public comments um, yep. to allow anyone who wanted to speak um, yep. to have that opportunity to do so. Absolutely. Okay. And so I'll let, I'll just put a chat message out here that after uh, city engineer Leo Foley's done, then we'll give them some time to have her. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we don't have to vote on this. So Leo can just take it away. Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Oh, no, no. You muted yourself. There, there you go. go. Okay, sorry about that. I was getting a little feedback. Um, I've got three things to report on. First one is Rainbow and Maxon. We are doing final design on Rainbow and Maxon right now. Um, we're getting to a point again where we probably need a meeting. So either at the next meeting or the meeting after that, I'll present um, the status and have a couple of things on the sidewalk that we can we can look into. Uh, we'll provide um, the city manager some drawings and some data for, for either the next meeting or the meeting after that, and he can decide which one it fits in the schedule best. And the next one is the cogeneration digester feasibility study. We are still processing through a potential grant from the state of Iowa with West Liberty Foods for this cogeneration digester project. Um, at this point, there's no, it hasn't started yet, but it'll probably be a three to six month study. It'll be looking into whether the digester is economically viable and is it something that should be at the wastewater treatment plant or on West Liberty, West Liberty Foods own property and so all that will be in that study and uh, I think next week we'll probably be having a meeting with the uh, economic development um, agency for the state of Iowa and they'll be potentially going to fund this study and the next one is our number well number two brushing and televising we're still awaiting good weather seems like today was pretty nice but I don't think the next week's going to be uh, adequate. So I'll keep you abreast of when that's going to happen. And that's all I had, unless somebody has questions. Thank you. I'm a little. Well, number two. I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question? Oh, I just said I was a little dis. Number two uh, is taking this. Um, the the group on brushing. Oh, you were disappointed it hasn't been done. Is that what you said? I'm I'm sorry, it's breaking up for me for some reason. For whatever reason, it's getting an echo on. So I apologize. Can Can you repeat the question, Lee? I'm going to send it to you in chat. Okay. Try your typing skills to the test. <laughs> Can I call my attention. Yes, I I I, I see. Councilmember McFerrin is frustrated that it's taken so long, I, and I am absolutely frustrated. The 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 well company that's been taking so long with this um, Northway Well and Pump is considered one of the best well companies in the state. 
Um, this one had a couple of tricky things with the hatch not being adequate for their drill rig. And that took some time, but why they didn't get to it right before the end of the year, before the stove fly, we pressured them a lot, Councilwoman, and uh, more or less they, they utilized um, the same thing a lot of people are, that they had all kinds of staff problems with the virus and that they couldn't get to West Liberty, and that was their excuse. Hey. Sorry about that. Are we first up on their list? Of That's what they say. They say we are first in the spring. I think also we do know they... They had that rig over in Coralville, and I think they ran into some problems. So I think they had some problems, and they did have one of their crews out. So, but we, from what we understand, we are first in the spring. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. After Leo, leave. okay. So we're gonna let uh, Zoom. I'm going to just type in there. Does sure. anyone have any? Um, Rachel said I was going to type first in a, in a chat. Okay. Now, if anybody wants to speak, we can hear you all just fine. It's just that you all can't hear us very well. I don't know if that went through. I'm just gonna say it's in house. I don't know how else to. Okay, since uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Rachel. All right, so my name is Rachel Dobble. I live in Washington. I'm not going to give you my full address. Um, I don't think that's appropriate via Zoom. Anyway, um, I grew up in West Liberty. And first, I want to say that I want to thank Nick Heath for getting my mom hooked up with the finally getting a phone call back by a cemetery plot. That was a big issue for another family member. It took six months. That should not ever happen. Moving on from that, I'm sickened to be watching for over a year about the fire department and the rural fire department. This concerns me because I still have family and friends that live there. I think that from watching all the council meetings, listening to them in person via Zoom and on YouTube, there's a lot of lack of communication from all of you that I'm not hearing, nobody's hearing anything other than we can't talk about that. We refuse to talk about that. I feel that if everyone would come out in the open and speak exactly what the issue is, maybe perhaps the rest of the community could see where the three of you are coming from. The last thing I have to say, because I know it's only two minutes that I get, is that I know this is in the library. I understand technical issues. However, you're the city of West Liberty. Help them get better microphones. Help them do whatever they need. Bring your own, whatever. For, so technical issues don't keep happening because it's been happening for so long. I'm talking over a year. And I know this because I attend these Zooms. That's all I have to say. And I do thank you for your time. And I do hope the council members, the two new ones and the three 
old ones do come to the right decision for my hometown. I could not in good conscience buy a house there just because of, for the lack of saying anything, you guys have been divided for years. And I got tired of the old ways. And that's how the old ways have always worked. It's time for new ways and new thinking to begin. Thank you. Rachel, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Anybody? Okay. All right. Do you um do you, do you mind if I make comment on some general um kind of rules? Um I uh, don't know if a lot of people understand the hierarchy or how uh, small governments work, but I just wanted to make a mention the fact that um, as elected officials, council people, we are the policy makers. So we are solely in charge of the what needs to be done when we're looking at the function of the city. Now the how it needs to be done falls before your professionals in the field. And when I say professionals in the field, I specifically mean your city clerk, your city manager, your department heads that are certified, whether it's wastewater treatment, your electrical superintendent, your um, finance officer, your treasurer, all of that. And that goes for the enforcement as well. So as far as what we do on council as policymakers, our job isn't to micromanage any of those bodies. Our job as policymakers is strictly to do the the what that the city needs. And that's as far as we go. The how and the and the, the how the city needs and how it gets there, that falls to the people that you put into that place that are supposed to be professionals and experienced leaders in that area, the people that you hire to do those jobs. That's why early on when I said, or when it came up that we don't know the day-to-day -day, is because technically it's not our job as elected officials to know the day-to-day -day of everybody's job because that involves micromanaging. It is, there's a hierarchy that we follow and your city manager is the one that oversees your day-to-day -day as well as your specific, what you have in place that do those jobs. So, so uh, Councilwoman McLaren, I understand the- finish. Rachel, let her finish and then I'll let you speak So I, I'm not speaking of what your comment said, Rachel. I'm speaking as a, as a general whole to educate the public in general on, on our role as government officials in, in our government of how, and what we do as policymakers, because we don't do the day to day. We just do what policies and ordinances that need to be in place. We do the, the what for the city. The rest of it falls before your hierarchy of officials that are supposed to take on those positions and do the how part, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? It does make sense to me. I mean, so, um, so, so you're asking me if it makes sense. I know what hierarchy is in the government. I completely understand that. I'm a lot more educated than what you may know. What? So my question is, if you're not going to micromanage the different departments and you, you are what the city needs. So my question to you then, why did you vote no on the fire department chief that was voted on? by his department. Yeah. That's micromanaging. No, that's not micromanaging. Uh, it's written in our ordinance. That's in the agreement 
that we have in the ordinance that the council has to approve that wasn't made just this year by us that was already enacted in place in so it was enacted in place let me get this straight just so we all know that we're listening it, it's an ordinance that the five council members have to vote yes or no on an appointed person on the fire department yes or no we we vote to approve and recognize okay them, yeah. so you so you you are technically not recognizing the fire chief that the department voted on correct yes or no i don't know how to answer that because he's recognized as chief because he's the volunteers elected chief but you voted no not to appoint him. We, we yeah, this, I voted no not to appoint him because I had some issues. And have those issues been resolved? Uh, not at this point, we're still in discussions. But the problem with a lot of those discussions, unfortunately, a lot of it, we are unable to talk within a public realm because we've been under litigation since the middle of summer. So unfortunately, we can't talk about anything surrounding that litigation. So that restricts us. And secondly, another half of that is that we on are, are unable to talk about personnel or HR issues that deal with people that fall under the, the city government. So because that violates confidentiality and that could open ourselves up later on for another litigation. So unfortunately, we're unable to talk about some things in public. That's just the way it is. Okay, and I understand that, and I understand how the lit litigation, I really do. What I'm having a hard time comprehending since day one, and I cannot talk about the new uh, council members because they were not there, but the three of you were. So my question <laughs> to, I guess, to the three of you is when this all began, it as and let me, I'll call myself what I am right now. I am an outsider, but an outsider looking in, what we see, and I'm sure most of the public sees and the community of West Liberty sees, is that this has been a, since day one, back in, I believe, February of last year, 2021. I could be wrong on the month, might be a little earlier or later, that <laughs> it, this has been a step of, getting Chief Sickles out of him being a chief. And, no, no hold up. You wanted yeah. me to wait for you, you will wait for me. That's common courtesy, right? I'll give you, I'll give you one more minute. That's fine. Because um, I, I, I mean, there are people that are commenting, so I'm hoping you guys can see their comments um, about they have some questions as well. So that is the concern is that there's also the concern of, you know, the money, which you guys are not going to answer it because I understand the litigation, but you need to see where the outsiders are coming from and where the community it themselves are coming from. This has been, it looks like it's been a very set up plan for over a year. And maybe the three of you council members, the three old ones, and I guess I should add the city clerk, since you say the city clerk has things to do with those departments, which she should have zero say in. Okay. Um, okay. Ten, 10 more seconds. Okay. Well, I'm done because you guys are obviously not, I mean, I'm watching your facial expressions and, and you guys checked out minutes ago. You don't care what I say. And that's obvious because you do not care about West Liberty as a community, as a whole. So I'm muting her because we're losing the rationale of the conversation. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm sorry that people feel that way, but unfortunately that seems to be a image that was created by whatever, but that isn't the position that the city takes. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sorry people feel that way, but um, we are working uh in moving the steps in the right direction and trying to look towards the future and be very positive. And we're doing that in the correct manner 
and making sure that we follow the rules, uh, both with you know our code, mm -hmm. as we adopt new code, uh, which we're working on as well, and state statute, which we have to abide by. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and I do know that the city manager just met with the fire department last week and for quite a while. And actually, um, I uh, had an hour and a half meeting with the chief and the assistant chief, which mm -hmm. led to a two hour meeting with the fire department a couple days later. Mm -hmm. And I spent an hour and a half today with the chief and assistant chief uh, working on their budget with, with them. Great. And I'll be meeting with the rural trustees tomorrow evening. Great, so we're definitely making progress. I, I definitely concur with you and I think as the, this person say, the, the communications were broken. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, the young repair. No, no, no. We need to see the way things are, are yeah. moving, and we'll, we'll get to a point that we can solve this problem. Yeah, I think we can. We've well, had some some positive conversations. It's just a matter of setting the table, talking, and then mm -hmm. trying to find some common ground. Yeah. So. But um, definitely, uh, thank you, Rachel, and anybody who um, put in the comments too. I'm not sure if we record those, Lee, for minutes or, yeah, those will be in the minutes because. Well, they're not going to be in the minutes because there are some comments that are not appropriate. They're not a part of your, so they would have to make it an official public comment, okay. but they will be archived within the, within the Zoom file. Okay, thank you. So, um, and again, I mean, I guess I would just invite them. There is an organizational chart mm -hmm. that will best explain. So we are a city manager, um, city operation. We're operated at, with a city manager mm -hmm. and every city has to have a city clerk. And, and yes, the city clerk is always going to be involved. There's, mm -hmm. there's no way out of that. That's your official record keeper. So. And we're a mayor, mayor, council, form of government, right? Right. So, well, I know that um, there's definitely a lot of things that wouldn't get done if it weren't for you. Lee. So. Well, just let me clarify. The reason why, again, the reason why I'm saying there, these their comments are in the chat. They're not a part of public record, mm -hmm. and so I mean, individuals are thinking that their chats should be a part of the minutes, but they're not a part of the public record there on a Zoom feed. Um, they are always welcome if they want a part of a public record, then they can do a formal public record through an email or again, present in the public forum. Um, I appreciate Madam Mayor Pro Tem that you allow them an additional time um, at the end of the meeting for the public comments. So with that said, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Well, wait, do you have any more staff? Just yes. have a question. Oh, sorry have. about that. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. more staff minutes. If you have any questions, like I said, I think uh, if you have any questions on anything, if any questions are done, we have to try to answer those. I think Council Member Barana, <clears throat> we owe her a follow up on Colin Barium question from the last. I don't know if we. No, where are we at? We. we currently, we don't have a place to store those. Um, so we need to see if they can store them. They, 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 they need to hold on to them until spring hits, and, and we have time to actually make sure that the bases are, are put in place and, and put in correctly so we don't run into the issues that you ran into with the first, is it one or two that are there? There are, we have two, two that, that we, have been that placed. We've had some issues with and ceiling we, and some different things, and I think the concrete settled. The, the concrete settled, and so we're going to plan on lifting the uh, existing two to have them sealed underneath. Um, and then we had looked, and the so the chip seal that's around is not going to be a safe place to set because they're very heavy, heavy, and that chip seal would sink. So because that was something that they looked at, and then there's no other place in our in the in our public that we could place those on a firm foundation without them shifting. So yeah, that would be our you know, recommendation. We're, we're, we're currently working with uh, Memorials by Michael. And we'll have to make sure that we have the proper base so when they come to set those calibariums that we don't have the issue with the settling and the problem with, you know, or having to come back and seal. They should, 
that should have been taken care of the first time. It just didn't get done. And, and we and, and we want to make sure it's done correctly this time. Okay. But, then, we, but we will stay on top of it and make sure that, you know, as soon as we can get that in place and, and have those delivered, uh, we'll get that taken care of. What's your third, John? Can we speak about the sewage back up since it's on the agenda? Because I skipped to that field. Oh, um, so the that's third just third. A, yeah, that's just your EPA report okay. um, submitted. That were required to, yeah. share, okay. to share with you and, and yeah. have, have a record okay. that, that it was shared. Yeah. So see your motion to have a second to adjourn. No, um, the motion was second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you, everybody.